Okay, everyone, welcome back. Uh, I hope you joined us for the sessions just now uh, on exploring education. And I hope you're all ready for our keynote program this evening. Uh, I am going to introduce this program. We will then have time for Q&A at the end, and then we'll move over for a casual conversation uh, with Fife in uh, sessions after this. Uh, this keynote presentation is sponsored by Shippa Publishing, who has published Fife's uh, new book. Um, and I'm going to introduce this and play uh, the program for you. So Dr. Bifei Tiao is a maker and educator who lives both in the United States and China. A native of China, he has been living in the US, Australia, who represent the Netherlands uh, for over 10 years, holding a permanent status uh, of alien of extraordinary ability in the United States. Tiao received an MFA degree from Indiana University of Pennsylvania under Linda Ro LaRoche and a PhD in research from the ANU School of Art, Australia. By utilizing traditional Chinese crafts and its related philosophies, he creates jewelry-based objects and hollowware that reflect his personal life experience and an approach of bringing traditional techniques into contemporary life. His work has been exhibited nationally and internationally, including nine solo exhibitions in Australia, the United States, New Zealand, and China. He received the 2018 AJF Artist Award from Art Jewelry Forum, with serving as one of three juries for the 2020 AJF Young Artist Award. He's worked as residency artist at the Peters Valley School of Craft, University of Arts in Philadelphia, and Craft Alliance in the United States, and the Wellington Asia Residency Exchange in New Zealand. He also worked as a visiting professor or artist that taught contemporary jewelry and metals at universities both nationally and internationally. His recent book, Chinese Contemporary Jewelry Design, which is published by Shipper Publishing in the US. He's currently working as an associate professor in the School of Art and Design at Guangdong University of Technology in China. And the program tonight is focused on the development of Chinese contemporary jewelry and the learning across cultures. I'm going to play the program for you now, and then I'll see you back here for Q&A. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Bi Fei Cao. I'm currently working as a associate professor at Guangdong University of Technology in Guangzhou. Um, actually, it's 6 a.m. in, in China and um, probably same 6 p.m. in East Town. So really appreciate uh, Slack to brought us together um, for this virtual conference. And uh, I was so happy to be, you know, return back at the events of Slack. And um, it's really a great support for all of us. And uh, we are Slack. So my presentation, the development of Chinese contemporary jewelry and the learning cross-culture, we focused on two parts. The situation of, uh, uh, of Chinese contemporary jewelry and the learning cross-cultures and also my personal work as an example. China is one of the earliest countries to use custom technique for bronze way of making, you know, kind of dating back to around 3000 BC. By casting this copper alloy, the use of the bronze ware has to be considered as an important symbol of, of the birth of the civilization in the world. You can see that bronze casting ingredients so they can be different, uh, uh, you know, um, tools such as a you know, sword and a dagger and a mirror. The bronze ware has also represented a culture of social code system in ancient China because it has embraced roots and culture of that period as you know material culture properly on candles, physical many. Manifest manifestations of culture and therefore embrace those seg segments of human learning and behaving. Chinese culture, like the process of bronze casting, any pros had been casted from different regional cultures and the minority cultures through a consistent evolution of 5,000 years. As you can see, we have so many different numbers, also as you know, ingredients to casting a new culture 
at the moment. So um, both Chinese government policies of uh, Western learning spread to the East in the recent history and then spread traditional Chinese culture to the West in current period had proved the culture are always being interacted and communicated. All the jewelry has, is, is also one of the evidence of cultural casting in the history of China. I argue it has been controlled and followed by Chinese government policy. Jewelry was regarded as a luxury of capitalism during the Cultural Revolution uh, and um, you know, the period from 1966 to 1976. You know, no one wore any jewelry. You can see it's from the images. And uh, even you know, where they were married, they couldn't wear any uh, jewelry. At the conclusion of Cultural Revolution, a new door was opened under the garden, the gardens of Deng Xiaoping's um, 1978 policy, where the jewelry industry was now under central government control. So it's still control, but the you know, Jewish door were early or not to open under strict conditions, and most were state-owned and large-scale collectively owned enterprise. So the policy helped to development with the jewelry industry as below you can see that um, you know the only follower owned enterprise and also uh, setups of the jewelry industry associations. And uh, to that time you know school began to change in jewelry designer for industry. The central academy of uh, art and design now limited at the Academy of Art and Design, Tsinghua University started jewelry design courses for jewelry manufacturer. So you can see that's uh, um, the courses factors, Shun Jiaying and uh, her work. That was like 1987. And then um, during the period from the late 1980s and uh, the late 1970s, uh, 90s, it was not possible to you know, access contemporary jewelry in China. But the gold peer road of jewelry manufacture and the industry indeed provide a platform for jewelry um, programs. A jewelry um, design you know, direction was established as a decorative art and, uh, and a design major as a part of the R and D craft department in Beijing Institution of Fashion Technology in Landi Landi Sui. So the major was the first directions that was created to cater for creative jewelry design and that was not influenced by the jewelry manufacturer or the market. Hosted by uh, you know the Tang Xuxiang. So that's the, uh, the main factory and also his work, the teapot. And then during the period of 2000 to uh, 2007, a new structure was launched in China, uh, in Chinese college and the universities. Initially, you know, this early occurs in two colleges, the Central Academy of Fine Arts, we call it cafe, or uh, in Beijing, Actually, it's held by Ten Fei, you know, and then that's her student work during that moment. And then the second one is the uh, Fine Arts College of Shanghai University, not named the Shanghai Academy of Fine Arts, headed by Guo Xing, who studied at the Indiana University of Pennsylvania. So the, the two, you know, held lectures of each jury program. And these colleges actually um, the trend either from in Europe, as Tenfei trend from Europe, uh, or you know, the States. They aimed at the teaching philosophies, were for the exploration of contemporary ideas and concepts, rather than you know, the leads of jewelry company and the market. In here, I also would like to mention actually the first Chinese contemporary. Jewelry and Craft Gallery 
that Shanghai Two City Gallery was set up by Guo Xing in 2005. So you know that were you know continue you know uh, other new programs in different universities such as uh, Academy of Art and Design, Tsinghua University. So also set up by Tan Shu Xiao when he returned to Tsinghua and teaching and there. So that's his student work around 2007. And uh, another one is Nanjing University of the Arts. And then uh, that's their uh, the student work in that moment. And um, Child Academy of the Arts, uh, and also um, and there were. I'm not you know ex explored you know, more you know one by one, um, and then you know keep their time going at the peer road uh, of the Great Flux. Mm -hmm. So after uh, Xi Jinping became the president of Charlie in 2017. His policy was cultural confidence and the national rejuvenation, uh, which in Chinese contemporary Jewish field, the influence were towards expansion of exhibitions and the study abroad. So the front page that this image is, um, is the Central Academy of Fine Art and the Contemporary Art Jew Exhibition in 2012. And um, most of you guys know the Beijing International Jewelry Art Exhibition. And uh, also the Hangzhou Contemporary International Jewelry and the Metal Art Trainer Exhibition. And uh, all you know, communication and interaction between the West and, uh, and, uh, and China. And the exhibition also, the exhibition tour to British and uh, the United States. T 2019, more than 1,700 programs opened up in university or community college. Part of that set up jewelry and a gem gemstone design major into you know directly meet the needs for a jewelry designer in jewelry market, and part of them approach to more diverse subjects such as contemporary jewelry exploration. So a part of from um, from the uh, about the development of Chinese contemporary jewelry, I also used my personal work as an example uh, in this uh, lecture. So in Chinese institution and uh, academics, as everybody may know, so um, we call the National College Entry Exam for first year undergraduate student normally it's herded in June each year, and it's commonly referenced to as Black July. And this important exam determines the academic fits, fits of a, a large number of Chinese students. You know, every high school final year student has only this one opportunity to further their studies in a university or college, depends on you know score they receive from the examination. Unfortunately, you know, at the beginning of this um, millennium in mean, 2000, I was one of the uh, lucky candidates to enter Beijing Institute of Fashion Technology for my undergraduate study. Uh, so that's my early work. So um, be honest, uh, I don't know. It's just a joke, maybe. You know, I'm I read a lot. Of, you know, I, I'm adore fashion design, but uh, but it, you know, the background through my uh, design it really gave me a lot of, uh, you know, uh, my undergrad studying gave me lots of influence. Uh, indeed, you know, also uh, design ability such as use you know, can see here use the acrylic, you know, plastic in my later work. And uh, that's my graduation work for my um, Bachelor of Art in, in, fa in fashion 
accessories. I also, you know, took sculpt metals in you know, in in laser uh, carving and uh, and chess and replica. Also enamors and then um, doing my undergrad studies. So it's really gave me a little bit you know, foundation. So I also went to Tsinghua University for my MA study, focused on Chinese traditional medicine. So made a few teapots set up by use raising techniques. So what I have learned in China, the most important thing is, you know, I, I really don't know what I wanted to do, but I know, you know, what I don't like to do. Uh, you know, after school, I work as a design editor for a jewelry design magazine for well, uh, a year, and I never go back studio. And I keep thinking, you know, I'm going to go, and then what I'm going to do. So uh, I, I'm so lucky, came to the United States. I mean, the original reason for me to uh, have my MFA study is to find uh, you know, a, a studio and devote myself to medicine and uh, maybe have another chance to try if I'm qualified to be a medicine or service. I had a basic understanding about life, you know, learning a skill, survive early, and survive also easy. I work harder to know different techniques um, during my MFA study at the Indiana University, University of Pennsylvania. You can see the whole image rolling. I mean, through making, I was found my uh, destiny, you know, to be a maker. And uh, I would like to say to myself, you know, I wanted to be a, maybe a cultural maker. So that's the whole work you guys can see uh, through the PowerPoint here. It's very, um, in that moment, I really worked very hard on this kinds of and different techniques. So I spent uh, a lot of time to, uh, you know, explore different materials such as, you know, wood, and um, and then, and then also multi, um, multi material, and um, I was making a more uh, sculpture and um, jewelry work. And then it gave me a lot of uh, uh, you know different uh, uh, ideas when I learned from you know Slack and uh, especially I read most uh, every Slack medicine magazine. Well, I adopted my you know life in the states, and uh, I keep the back and forth you know, f uh, you know, f and I was a flash in my memory you know. Um, I'm a generation you know born after the Cultural Revolution, and um, and I grew up grew up in your village, and uh, I don't normally I don't use this kind of uh, my like childhood uh, images actually, and uh, and. Uh, so I remembered most of my childhood games through, you know, childhood memories. And, uh, and uh, I have a, a large family members, you know, that's my father's side. And this photo took on 2016 when my grandma, grandmother's birthday. So she's in the center. Uh, also, I have three sisters and two of them are married. And uh, this photo took on 2012. You know, uh, since I'm brought, you know, in village that doesn't get any control about one child policy. So when I saw traffic, you know, traffic and the cars in the cities, and also my new life experience in the States. So I began to actually mold these two references together, morph it into transportable objects. So I made this series called Transferency. And in this series, you know, red is important to me. You know, it is as a lucky and we and wish actually in Chinese culture. Uh, but uh, you know, traffic design in, in 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 Western countries is red for forbid, stop, 
or dangerous. So I tried to investigate my whole work, you know, to merge this kind uh, reference together, um, both influenced flow in Chinese tradition, visual culture, and uh, you know, my new ex experience in the States, such as you can see the whole work here. It's a role about uh, um, childhood games, and also, you know, um, my new life, and also wonder where I'm going to go, you know, in, in, the, in, in the States after graduate. So that this series is my um, MFA graduation works. And uh, I was very uh, lucky to, um, to get the first players awards from uh, SLAG Education Adornment Scholarship, which really exposed me to um, you know, different um, galleries and uh, also received the different exhibitions. After com com uh, finished my MFA, I began working you know, as an artist founder at the Peters Valley School of Craft, and I'm also a residency artist uh, in Philadelphia in Philadelphia at uh, University of the Arts. So I was joined, you know, uh, uh, most went actually every um, Slack conference. So that's this one on the left, it's uh, Philadelphia conference in 2009. So it was my first uh, Slack conference experience. So that next to the second is my advisor, uh, Linda LaRoche and uh, I missed her a lot. And then that's, uh, um, you know, work at the residency at the U Arts. And then um, that's a lot to, I uh, really appreciate a lot of, uh, uh, you know, artists such as Sharon and um, um, that all happened to me a lot. Um, So after uh, all this journey in the States, um, I, re, uh, I was very also lucky to apply to a PhD program, um, program at uh, the School of Art, uh, Australia National University in Canberra. It was also a brand new experience for me because I never experienced uh, Christmas in December and also, you know, uh, it's very like a hot summer in December, and we, you know, and uh, I, I, I haven't, and I haven't realized that when people uh, talk about, uh, oh, um, get a picture, and uh, I realize, oh, okay, it's a gas. So that's the difference, the difference, English between you know the states and Australia and I will I have a you know new uh, my host new experience at the workshop and I also keep learning mm -hmm. and um, my PhD research titled building contemporary personal narratives through interpretation of a traditional Chinese visual culture so um I keep work, keep I keep working, you know, through uh, and um, lots of uh, uh, experiments and exploration, and I keep wondering how to reinterpret and this tradition of cultural heritage through jewelry-based object making, and also how could I draw reference from that heritage and that its material form and the related traditional philosophies. So brought with me those questions during my PhD uh, research. 
Mm. And uh, in later December 2013, it was a dry and very hot Christmas, as I just said. And I ran my bicycle from home to studio um, at school. And I really heard the sound of a back pinning away from the trains as uh, I pedals along. And you know, some of them are curved into mud and some piled together on the ground. Um, also, in early um, 2014, I visited the, the Waste Lake in Hanzhou, China, accompanied by my parents. And it was early spring. And then there were a few groups of decayed lotus blooms that had suffered due to the theory for, for, forested of a, a Waste Lake winter. And I, each de decomposing lotus stood proudly Proudly in the water, you know, during the sunset, you know, like a brave skeleton with a full backbone. And then the two contrast later. It's so, you know. To track the my attention and to, and um, you know, suddenly uh, intervened with, with my childhood memories, and uh, uh, of uh, you know har harvest and uh, lotus roots with my parents. So with continued explores, uh, you know, uh, through the traditional architecture, I found uh, you know quite different um, architecture wood joints, wood or called wood frame joints. So I explored the cross joints into this series. I portrayed each pose of a, a lotus or you know decayed um, bark and merge them together, you know, to make each kind of a different um, images or, or, you know, or, or Im memories of my images about these two later and, uh, uh, and then to portray the in between. And you can see that uh, cross joints repeated uh, with each other. It's similar, uh, some of the more like uh, me mechanically and some of the more you know, more um, randomly, makes more like, uh, you know, architecture or nature. Mm. And then you can see it. And I also use that uh, to build a contrast between geometric form and the nature form. And also to imitate uh, the tra traditional um, bamboo hardware. And through this series, I found, you know, a joint that became a link, you know, of uh, my uh, fragile memory or my, um, my memories of, uh, you know, China, United States and Australia and uh, current experience um, together. So uh, since I have that uh, experience, I also had my, an exchange study um, to the Netherlands at the um, Harry Whitfield in Amsterdam. And uh, I was exposed to you know, my research to a more complex cultural situation in your new country, actually. Um, in there, I visited other European countries. Um, and uh, one, uh, one thing, um, it's very also made me think about China is that I, my friends, a friend of mine asked me to buy, you know, milk powder um, for his new baby. And, uh, and uh, it's a very like, awkward experience for me because uh, in the front desk in each uh, supermarket, 
it's only allowed me to buy one can of milk powder um, per day because uh, she said that's a black market in a in uh, you know in 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 Asian countries also in China and because that were that was a milk powder scandal in two thousand eight in China so this this experience you know, got me uh, you know fascinated you know to that. Uh, material which is the milk powder material because it seems very important and experience for Chinese parents you know to buy you know milk powder from overseas because you know the shipping fee also um, you have to ask the agent to buy you know blah 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 mm. so I started to mix uh, milk powder and wood glue and baby oil and the pigment together to produce a new hybrid material. I call it a, a milk jet. And I'm starting, you can see that um, a little bit of transparency in here. Mm. And uh, I conducted the experiment to try to imitate traditional and refined jet. And uh, the new jade series and that are first to ex explore different patterns you know on traditional different jade pieces and uh, after i also uh, deliberately selected uh, two jade form you know b or called disc form or yue X4, as they were mostly used on jade and bronze material and rarely used in other materials. I found it easy to fix the jade material for these works so as to give people the inspiration of real jade material. And um, as I, I mentioned before, I researched you know, different ways of uh, constructing joints use diverse material and shapes and uh, and in this series i not only explore the material and i also began to uh, you know explore is, uh, explore um, this material with different joints so i recall the different shapes of milk powder jade uh, sheets and uh, you know each color art was so fragile and i could not I could feel this unlinked memory of my mind. And uh, all this cut art were placed in a new order by insert, feeding, joining, and stitching to create a new memory. And uh, in that moment, while thinking, keep thinking about the joints, you know, memories and joints, my life experience, and, uh, and uh, I visited different uh, jet collections of museum. Uh, of a Mizu museum in China. I was fascinated by the linkage method used in the jet brewer uh, suit constructed during the West Han Dynasty. The Han Dynasty is an uh, extremely you know, superstitious period in Chinese his history. And people believed the jet could protect the body of uh, immort immortals in order to keep the body and the spiritual immortal. And uh, each memory, each, uh, not, uh, each empire, empire spend a lot of their budget and the labor on making jade accessories, especially, you know, you can see the jade blue suits, you know, that, that, uh, that can serve as the body clothes after the empire Yes. So under this Lincoln, you know, immediately, you know, attracted me to continue my exploration. So I made a whole new series called the Bass series. And, uh, and uh, in this series, um, in the first research is about, you know, uh, from the, uh, uh, the early res uh, scientific research that uh, milk um, used to, to make uh, plastic. Mm. 
and uh, and uh, and uh, also I try to use the reinterpret tradition techniques and uh, combined with uh, my current life experience. And this series also received uh, um, uh, AJF uh, uh, artist awards from the Alidri Forum in 2018. And uh, it's really, uh, you know, it's really great um, awards. I really encourage every uh, young artist to apply. And then um, not just the explorers, exposing your work, but also and um, give you get the economic uh, or, or called uh, financial support. And then uh, it continued um, helped me to, you know, to make more and more. So that's all after um, I returned to China and the teaching at uh, Wandu University of Tech Technology, I made uh, um, all series continued work. And after returned to China, uh, regards to personal making, actually I haven't, uh, you know, um, changed at all and really uh, sticked in, you know, uh, the similar method to explore different pa um, possibilities. Um, the investigation included material experiment when I faced so many recycled material, such as, uh, you know, this kind of recycled credit card, plus card, or ca cafeteria food card in China. And uh, I also traveled to different places, you know, uh, such as, you know, in Yunlan Dali, the bi nationalities area, when I keep research uh, the traditional medicines. And uh, during my research of there, the most unexpected experience actually you know, was an uh, encounter with a traditional loading, not, nodding, nodding uh, objects in Yunnan Nationalities Museum in Kuiming City. And, uh, and um, constantly, you know, uh, I was reviewed traditional Maru's and Latin objects at the uh, Tepapa Museum of uh, New Zealand and during a residency program that is supported by Asian New Zealand Foundation, Wellington City Council and the Taoha means the New Zealand Institute of Creativity. Both observation allowed me to capture this primitive and original making method. And uh, constantly, I continue to apply, you know, this historic drawing method that I used for jade blue suit made, you know, during the Han Dynasty in China. And uh, I used this similar method to imitate each traditional knot. You can see here, I mean, I, in this area, I still, in here, I still used uh, the milk powder and, uh, and uh, just a nodding, keep making different nodding. And then later on, around 2020, uh, you know, the, during the um, pandemic, um, I tried to um, reflect my, you know, um, we all call the pain or, you know, but we have to be, you know, happy. Um, you know, I recorded experience to, to make announcement. We need to fight in, you know, this, um, uh, you know, pandemic and uh, I use recycled, uh, uh, different recycled plastic card and um, to, and to, you know, to make uh, the first piece of called uh, the new love of the rivers. And then this one is called, uh, and don't give up. And uh, as uh, 
in above the three series and you know the keyword such as connect you know insert uh, or attach ex exp expressed in a continuity in my work you now i really happen to know what exactly is next you know for my work but uh, synthesize these keywords in my artistic exploration And uh, with that consideration, um, bring contemporary life experience uh, or feelings to my work has been another labor construction where I involved with thoughts of cultural identity that related to my personal life experience when spent more than 10 years of, of overseas live experience, especially in that cross culture and um, place influence, you know, my whole um, life experience in the States, in the Australia, you know, in the Netherlands, and uh, all other countries in Europe. Mm. And uh, each new emotional space, whatever enclosed or opened, or the hosted personal memory of culture, history, and the life experience, and brought a new function, functionality while combined traditional techniques with contemporary com contemporary materials. And uh, that's for my um, presentation. Thanks again and um, and thanks so much for your for your guys' time. And then uh, we can talk uh, back to the um uh, uh, back uh, back room. Have a, a great uh, evening. <laughs> Okay, that was so fantastic. What a great presentation and summation of your practice. I'm about to welcome Bife to the stage so that we can all hang out. Hey, Bife, you made it. Oh, yes, I made it. Hey, <laughs> hey Alex, hey. and hey, everyone. What a uh, wonderful presentation. That was so fantastic. Your breakdown of these different kind of uh, cultural periods and aligning them with this educational practice within jewelry was just amazing. I loved that. It's really fantastic. <laughs> Folks, uh, put your questions in the chat. We've got time for q and I know you must all be just uh, dying to ask your questions. So please say hello and please drop your questions in the chat and I will surface them up. Where are you dialing in from right now, Bife? Uh, actually, I, I traveled to another city um, in Jiangsu, Jiangsu province. So I'm in a hotel. So the Wi-Fi connection is so bad. And uh, <laughs> tried, tried, finally, God helped me. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, we're so glad that you could be here. It's so fantastic to... Uh, mm -hmm to be able to have you. You're getting a lot of love in the in the chat right now for that fantastic presentation. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to kind of round out? I know that, you know, it was a pre-record, so if you want to just add some kind of uh, personal context to it, you can feel free. Personal context. <laughs> so, um, 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 probably, I didn't have not checked the email yet. So, uh, Sean Cronson said uh, that would be a uh, um, uh, do the New York uh, Jewelry Week, and okay. um, um, he will have he hosts an exhibition, you know, called uh, East Asian exhibition. So artists from from Japan, Korea, and then China. So please visit. I don't know. I think you're on mute, Bife. Let me just fix this. Hmm. Something going on with your microphone, I think. If, if you can hear us, you're on mute right now. I'm not sure if you're having a, another. Oh, there we yeah. go. Yeah. We, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's on now? Yes, it's back. <laughs> oh, 
I couldn't hear you actually. Oh no. <laughs> um we do actually so have I have a brand new uh can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh I didn't hear Alex. I I couldn't hear you. So anyone would like to in the future, you know, after pandemic, so if you guys anyone wanna visit in China and then just please connect me so uh, we see you know what we can do. Um but I, I do have a brand new like uh studio. Yeah, or, or called a workshop in Guangdong University of Technology in, in Guangzhou. Mm. Awesome. Um, we do have one question oh, from the audience. Uh, so mute. Oh, Elizabeth. If I could stop. Oh, no. Oh. Sorry, guys. Uh, internet connectivity things happening. <laughs> Can you hear me, Bifei? Okay. I think we're maybe experiencing a bit of a delay here too. <laughs> Sorry, Alex, I couldn't hear you now. I don't know why. Oh so, no, can you hear me now? Some sense. Of, uh, shut down this one. <gasps> Okay, I couldn't hear you. So anything can you, you can tap in so I can answer. Yes, let me do that for you. I'm going to uh I'm gonna copy this and question. Sharing <laughs> We're gonna have to do this old school style. Uh hot nick based jet, hold up, it is doable. Uh, it is doable, but uh, it's not uh, edible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then um, because uh, when I put a piece, I did I finished half probably a mouse, you know, came in, and uh, you know, and the eating half. Uh, I don't know what's happened to the mouse, but uh, but uh, it is doable. So you can you can just drop to the floor because uh, the flex, you know, that is a very flexible link. So when you drop to the floor, I mean, not heavily. It doesn't uh, like break even, so you know that's I tested, and I also put it in um one hundred temperature hot water, and uh, I mean surface one hundred temperature, so it also hold it together, and uh, I put it in tested uh, three days, but I still hold, uh, because I you have to cook, you know that's the uh, whole the ingredients are mixed with wood glue stuff. So it is doable, but uh, you cannot say uh, like it's doable that I'm not know. that would be like impossible. Mm. Um, okay. Mm. <laughs> uh, another question here from Katja is: yeah, It is like, like that, though. Um. <laughs> wow, the internet is so slow. Come on. <laughs> Yes, I cannot hear X at all. No, um, here, let me try and um, mute myself. So, what's happened? Maybe, um, bring on, you can connect me with Facebook so I can hear Alex. <laughs> I'm here. I don't know if the face, yeah, we had plan B FaceTime because Bife got in about I even couldn't hear five you minutes at before all the presentation either. ended. Um, so what's but we happening? could try to we could see if um yeah I don't know if the sessions would be any different probably not. Oh. <sighs> Sounds like they're losing the sound on the other end too. You can't even hear at all. God. Um. We can. 
we can try to face face time. Why don't we try to move? Let's move so into Matt, sessions, move and section. I can try to face okay. Aaron's screen share. <laughs> Let's do that. Yeah, so you guys I'll, can move I'll, on I'll to sessions. And, uh, so, so, so I, I'm I'm down here now. <laughs> Um, or I, and or, thanks again for everyone. Uh, uh. If you can hear us, we're heading over to sessions now. Okay, okay. Um, so uh, everyone. So I'm going to <laughs> have a have a good evening. <laughs> oh, sorry. I want to see comments. <laughs> oh yeah, lots of sand. <laughs> okay, so we'll we're gonna sign off. Alex, you have part your part wonderful yes. eloquent parting uh words. Um sorry about so I'm going to look out. We're gonna go to yeah. sessions. Yes, I'm okay. Gonna, uh, <laughs> pick things off or close things out here. Um, folks, I hope you can hear me. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for joining us today for a wonderful roster of presentations. Thank you, Bife, for uh, bearing with us with this technical difficulties. We'll head over to sessions and try and continue the conversation. Um, so please join us there. Um, and we hope to see you all tomorrow for another exciting day of programming. I will be here again. We'll be back here on the main stage at 12 o'clock. Um, so please join us then, and we will see you uh, over in sessions. Again, if you need to find the sessions, head over to the left-hand side of your screen. There is an icon there where you can click on sessions and join the conversation live. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. We'll see you tomorrow. You know, the internet, uh, I mean, I'm glad we recorded. I knew that. I said, I need to. Sorry, Sharon, I'm telling Bife, he can't see anybody else. So he's going to still try to come in. Okay. But maybe we can at least do this as a backup. It's just, okay. let's see where we get. So I'm going to just mute for a minute <laughs> as we sort this out.
Sorry, I'm reading it to be fake. <laughs> Oh, yes, I okay. Think we're okay. hoping to connect him in just another minute. Okay. Okay. My apologies. Oh, it's so bright. <laughs> Maybe he went back to bed. <laughs> but it's probably very oh, early no, in the morning. Yeah. I'm on my but it's not his face it's like cut off and there's nothing to see oh there he goes here i'll share your face so everybody can see your face was it three in the morning there or two, like no, how no um, i think six six in the morning oh, okay that's not that bad here right. Bebe, you can hear everybody actually can you hear them talking somebody talk hi hi bife do you hear them hi no. He can't hear it. Yeah. Maybe it's too quiet. That's uh, me. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm still like I used to have the Thai, <laughs> Thai lips and uh, waves and 2000. I mean, it's, you know, um, it's so know. slow. Um, <laughs> so he's trying to log in right now. It's just loading. So, but he did even get, he got through the last time eventually, but then the sound didn't work. Yeah. He I will never come to this hotel but again. I said, but uh, everyone can hear <laughs> you. Can, we can hear you now. Yeah, can you hear us? Hello. Everyone. Hi. Be fair. you? That was great. I think it's probably uh, something happened to my, to my laptop, I guess so. I don't know. And then it's suddenly, it has sound, it's gone. Can, what if, Brian? what if we ask questions and then you say them, repeat yeah, them, yeah, yeah, and then can, do that. Yeah, that would work. What? Yeah. They can ask questions and then I can ask them to you and then you can answer them. Um, <laughs> how about that? That's me. Uh, that's me. We, 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 um, Facebook and uh, I log in us with my phone if, if it work or not. You want to switch from Facebook to this? You want to switch from this? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So we see if I can. Maybe I don't have Facebook. I don't do Facebook. Don't do Facebook. No. <laughs> okay. No, I think stick like this. Okay. Yeah. So, so questions? Do people have questions? No. Well, it's not really. It's not really a question, <laughs> but it is. Um, I think. What I found so inspiring was to hear about, to hear. Sorry. Can you type what? the question in the chat? Cause maybe that will be easier. Okay. Oh yeah, I, did, I just did. Oh, yeah, you did. So, I mean, okay. so here's the first question. So Sharon says, so inspiring to hear about the path you followed, which brought you to where you are today. So you, you want him to expand on that? Yeah, because I think for so many artists and for so many students, it's so important. It's so important to think about a path. You know, to develop a path, and and it's so clear in B phase. Um, you know, and not just because he went to all these different countries, but. He's been following a path almost like in a in a fluid way, and that has influenced his work more than anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also, can I say like, um, uh, how do I put this? How he was, his thoughtfulness and the way it seemed like he was really moving and. To interrupt. <laughs> Pause for a second because he got yeah. in and now I'm hearing too much. One second. I'm very sorry for this. Yeah. I was going to say how incredible it was that he took that one little thing from like the jade burial garments, the sewing of the small pieces and then took the milk and turned it all into a whole other thing it's so incredible well it's part of it's part of 
honoring your cultural heritage and mm -hmm. do you how do you connect to that or how often don't you connect to it because you know it's all in the past but i think what he did in this specific work i think was using part of his history to put it in a let's say contemporary setting and make it into something that clearly is connected through his ancestors etc cetera, etc cetera. goes very far back i thought yes. that was very inspiring absolutely and it also connected to the present because he used a product that was so in the now in their culture the head like oh yeah so inspiring so incredible Okay. okay, I think BC can hear him, right? He's going to try to respond because yeah. he could hear okay. you. Okay. Go ahead. He can hear okay. us. Okay. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> you might have to mute your computer. Mute? Right, go ahead and try. No, now I can't hear you. No. No, it, I can't hear. So I have to do that. Yeah, it's okay. Maybe. It's kind of like a three connections. So Mon Nan connected me through, through, through my, you know, MacBook. So I can hear everyone. Okay. Do you want to try to put your video? Do you want to try to put your video on in here? Do you see that blue button that says connect audio and video and in, in the hop in? No, I mean, right now, I even couldn't log in the hobby. I, it, okay. It's because the Monang connected me through WeChat. Oh. So right now, we are connected, and I can hear everyone talking Got from you. her laptop. Got you. Okay, so do you want to answer the question? <laughs> you probably forgot the question now. So... <laughs> It's about your your path is very inspiring, probably to yeah. a lot of students and people. And um, mm -hmm. so okay. I'm not a good translator. So, no, no, I, I can hear. So the, I mean, really, yeah, it is my path uh, you know, through the states. I think uh, uh, the education of the, the United States really, you know, gave me the confidence, especially in my my advisor Linda La Rochelle and she encouraged me, you know, encouraged me. And I also joined every, you know, every Slack conference I went. And uh, and uh, I remember like uh, you know Seattle and uh, and uh, and uh, Arizona and uh, you know and uh, so and and California, you know after you know after I left I haven't got any time to return to Slack. But You lost it. They can still hear you, so you could keep talking. It's okay. Yeah. Andrew had a question about for Bife about what it was like to be introduced to the US in Indiana PA. Okay. You know, that's like yeah, very yes. cool. And, uh, and, uh, the money, sorry, is the, 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 yeah, the, the connection is off, cut off. So 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 many, um, you know, also great artists, as I mentioned, uh, you know, uh, you know, um, Sharon Church and the Majority, and then uh, Christy Muller, and uh, you know, even Brianna. We are, <laughs> you, you know, on that moment, you know, and uh, and uh, the Slag education elements helped me to expose my work more, and uh, that's the whole foundation directly you know get me forward to the phd research which you know in australia the netherlands and the other european countries so i try to renegotiating my you know traditional culture with uh, you know contemporary life or i call the western influence and uh, i think i i'm a i'm a good example to mold you know, both influence together. 
to mm -hmm. to, to create it, I call the hybrid or, or, or in between. Um, I mean, I still would like to do that. And uh, any any school can host me for a visiting artist for a year, probably like the next year or year after, I would like to do. I, will, I want to return back. And uh, even, I mean, I, I, I also would like to find a job in the States. I, I will find my, my dad had a Parkinson. So I have to look after him. You know, that's, you know, Ch traditional Chinese culture again. You know, I'm the only son. I have to have family. But I would like to go back to do, you know, to continue my, my like, uh, residency or, you know, visiting, being visiting artist. So, so it's kind of, I make a good announcement here. But you're, you're basically saying that how important it is to be kicked out of the nest and then go around and then at a certain point come back after 10 years, but leave your culture, expose yourself to many different cultures and then maybe come back because it influences you. Yeah, I can hear, but it's... What? I can't hear you. You couldn't hear. If I mute, you can't hear, right? Yeah. yeah. I okay. can't hear you. Because it's hard for him to hear the question, right? Because there's the feedback. Oh. But maybe that's what we could do is I'll just mute. You ask the question. Then I can unmute. He can answer. Let's try that. Okay. So Sharon, you are you are speaking. You may resume. I think we'll try this again. Okay, so what what I hear you're saying, and I I totally agree with that, is leave the nest at a certain point, expose yourself to many different cultures because they will they will influence your path and then maybe at a certain point come back, but leave the nest. I think that's healthy. Thanks. I mean, I mean, you see, I even didn't reply Brian's email at the moment at all. I, I think I even didn't sign the contract for this conference at the moment. I know, you're terrible. You're terrible. I haven't any time to, to reply your email because I was, last week I was in hospital, it happened to my dad, you know, she was in hospital. I know. I know. 10 years. <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I need a, you know, I need a, I mean, right now, you know, the school evaluation is quite different, you, you know, in China, between China and, and the States. Because for practice person, the American, they don't ask, the, you know, faculty to publish article or paper. And, then, and in China, that, that totally depends on that, you know, publish. SS, what is the SSCR, AHCR, and the SCR, what kind of, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, um, articles? Bifei, we have other big problems here. You want, Bifei, there are questions in the chat. Um, Andrew was asking what it was like to be introduced to the U.S. in Indiana, Pennsylvania. Was that your first, the first time you came to the United States? Yeah, yes. That's why I, I, I put, uh, I did put, uh, yeah, my, uh, yeah, my, my, my supervisor, Linda LaRocha, yeah, from Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, it's really, IUP is really happy, yeah. Oh, it's unbelievable, you know, for me, it's just, uh, uh, um, you know, unforgettable memory in my whole life. Because I really, just sitting in my workbench and then day by day, and then really worked hard through the three years. And I, I lived there like two and a half years, and then I moved to uh, Peters Valley. Uh, in, 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 I remember in, in, in May, 
2000, 2011. 2011. And, and uh, the whole uh, scholarship, the full scholarship from IUP and also from the Australian National University, uh, both scholarship really uh, gave me um, financial support during my overseas study. And I keep the mention, I was mentioned in my book, you know, that uh, we were published by Sheffrey Publisher last year um, called the Chinese Contemporary Jewelry Design. Uh, Here it is. <laughs> thanks. Um, I'll put a link really in the get, chat. You right. can get a link from the reception. If you click on Schiffer Publishing, it will go right to the book. Sorry, go ahead, Bife. Yeah, and uh, and uh, and uh, in the book, uh, I gave the whole review of uh, what's happened in China and what's happening now in China, and uh, and uh, and I didn't get uh, so much like deeper in in criticize you know, uh, uh, those phenomenon of uh, Chinese contemporary Jewelry at the moment, but uh, really return to the history and uh, and the developments and the situation of contemporary jewelry and I also I gave uh, six two uh, exposed uh, contemporary Chinese jewelry artist you know on the back so which which are selected uh, from from around like 400 applications mm -hmm. Well, it's it's a very young field in in China, but that's also very exciting. Thanks. And uh, I think in 2011, you know, in Beijing International Matter and then Jewelry Work Exhibition, uh, I remember it's hosted by Academy of Art and Design, Tsinghua University. Uh, I think Huda Peters said, uh, Chinese contemporary jewelry uh is a baby situation you know that was 2011 <laughs> and now it's 10 years past and now uh, i looked how many you know chinese students studied in the states right. and then right. europe and australia and the british a lot a lot a lot of them so i'm i was very also lucky to you know to be invited uh, um, to a uh, you know kind of panel um final uh you know final defense for different school for the students and i found half of them are you know are, are asian at least right but isn't isn't it interesting that um as far as i know a lot of the professors and and head of the metal departments uh now in china have studied abroad like keshen in in nanjing and vivian wang in hangzhou and uh dai xian and you all they've all studied abroad so they've brought this experience back and and i i think that you guys have done a great job so far yes yes so that's really a good weave at the moment, like uh, how uh, you know how the, how the influence of uh, Western you know contemporary jewelry and uh, still going in and uh, and uh, in my book I separate the two parts, uh, you know one part is that uh, you know factors and a student or you know this new factors or educated or had educated between you know. China and uh, overseas, and uh, part of them only trained uh, in China, but uh, is under you know factors who has a uh, overseas education. Right. But um, a lot of them, you know, that that still very like criti criticize about contemporary Chinese jewelry because uh, they still believe uh, you know that traditional techniques and then tra uh, tra traditional aesthetic and uh, forms and you know and um, you know the the thing some of them that really think of chi contemporary chinese jewelry is a fake well we are we are a small field in a, in a much bigger jewelry field and 
I think we have to accept that a lot of people just will not understand it. But we still have to do it. Yes, yes, that's we are like a shining goal. So yeah, um, right. Really pushed, uh, you know, this waving, and uh, and uh, and uh, right now every year we have a uh, annual exhibition, and this year it's the sixth year, so we worked very hard, and Shanghai is the best city in contemporary Chinese jewelry, and uh, also development, uh, movement, and the current situation is getting better and better, but not in not so much in Guangzhou. Guangzhou and the Shenzhen still are really huge jewelry manufacturer and industry. Right, right. Yeah, well, it's going to take time and it's going to take education. And, and also, uh, and everybody know, yes, uh, yes, Shuan, it takes time. And everybody know, like Beijing International, the, you know, the, uh, the exhibition you hosted by Beijing Institute Institute of Fashion Technology, and uh, and uh, a lot of artists joined the exhibition of the, of there, but you know, barely has any sales. Mm -hmm. I know, so but you just. On that part. You just have to trust the process and you have to work hard on education. My advice. Okay, we need someone next round. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've, I've been in this field uh, in different capacities for 53 years. And I am still not driving a Ferrari. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. So, all you can do is follow your passion. Thanks. I will go back to original. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see you have a message in the chat from Marilyn? From no, I couldn't. Jiang, uh, I don't know how to say Jiang Lu. J I A N G L I U. G A I. She's with Marilyn Koch, the coordinator of the jewelry studio in Syracuse University, and they wanted to say hi and thank you. Maybe thanks. I think you know. I just don't know how to pronounce her name correctly. Um, anybody else have questions? There's maybe a few people. I have lots of questions. Fortunately, I have to. I have to go. Um, question. Oh, I'm sorry. Louise has a question. Can you tell us your most inspirational moment, like an aha moment in each country you visited? Oh, wow. He has visited a lot of countries. <laughs> uh, I think, uh, you know, I'm in, in the States. Um, I think it's Monica. Uh, everyone is really like, friendly and it's very like laid back, you know, and. Uh, and uh, but uh, you know, work harder. You know, a lot. Of, I remember my colleagues. You, we were just working very hard to do at the end of you know final semester, even do the final semester, and we work very hard day by day, night by night. And uh, probably that's the that's the whole part. And ah, uh, oh, American donuts. Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes if you want to make some like donuts, actually, use the, use the jade connection, actually, I was wonder, you know. But I, but, but, but uh, it's, I mean, it's, I thought, you know, Susan, uh, oh, Susan, oh. and Susan Cohn also made a lot of donuts uh, in Australia. So I said, no, don't do that. I stopped it. But Australia is very, uh, 
funny thing, you, you know, it's just a season, you know, different first. And uh, and uh, I still remember that that's at a petrol, you know, in America we call the you know gas, you know, and the eighty gas, and uh, we need the gas, and but uh, the British, um, you know, accent, a uh, uh, pronunciation that did quite different, and uh, Australia has a lot of uh, also has a lot of uh, wild knife, you know, a lot of uh, um, bunnies. Puppets. Still here. I'll be right back. My dog is barking. And uh, and uh, and uh, in the Netherlands, I'm sure we know that. As uh, like raining in the winter and cold in the winter right. and uh, raining. And windy, that's the whole sense I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I agree. I agree. And uh, in Italy and uh. It's, it's, uh, uh, Spaniard and uh, everybody would like to go have a you know have a coffee and go outside for a coffee because I, I was there in late May so it, it that get very warmer up there and uh, and uh, it's really like a, uh, outside time for everyone. Louise asked if you traveled in the U.S. Well, you've been yes because you've been at a bunch of snag conferences so you went. You've traveled. Yeah, I you did residencies. I read. I did residency. You know, at uh, at a, you know first artist fellow at a Peters Valley School of Crafts, and uh, and later on, U Arts in Philadelphia, and uh, Craft Alliance. I need yeah. to also make a make a you know thanks to them as well. Mm -hmm. fair, I have to go. Thank you again. Okay. Have a good evening. Yeah, me too. I also needed to go. Uh, yeah, me yeah. too. So now you can take a rest. Now you have time to answer my emails. I will answer your email probably after I return back. Okay. He's been talking about your email for weeks, but I've been I've been bugging him about. No, he's been he's been so busy. I understand, but now he's liberated from the commitments and responsibilities of snack so now he has time yes yeah okay sorry thank you thank you thank you thank you okay be well stop the screen share and then i'll say goodbye to you okay and have a good evening everyone and or you know whatever where you are located and enjoy and you also enjoying this simple there Okay. And I will see you guys soon. <laughs> okay. Okay, bye-bye.